trying to bring up two more testifiers from Kohala, please. Hi, Aloha, Madam Chair. Uh, next up, we have Dash Kerr, you representing the Hawaii Institute of Pacific Agriculture, speaking in support of uh, Reso 452-14, as well as Bill 25. Aloha, Council. Thank you for listening to testimony today. I'm super appreciative of this Council, actually, for some of the really innovative legislation you guys have passed recently. And I see this as a, another opportunity to be a leader, um, you know, statewide. Uh, as he mentioned, I direct the Agriculture Institute up here in the Kohala area. In the last four months, we've brought 600 local youth to our farm to educate them about the importance of composting, about returning biomass to the land and diverting that compost away from the waste stream. It's a grassroots, on the ground solution to waste management problems. Um, this idea of an incinerator, it just seems like complete madness to me. I'm, I'm so curious, it seems so illogical to burn uh, what we educate the next generation of young farmers. We let them know that our biomass is one of our greatest resources. It is literally a goal that is going to transform our land back into productive land. I don't know if uh, you guys are aware of our global situation, but some estimates predict we only have 60 years left of topsoil as a result of poor management of land globally, uh, erosion, loss of organic matter. Um, so the idea of Big Island uh, to start burning biomass again, it just seems like madness. And I hope you'll take to heart all the, the really great testimony that happened today. I know that uh, not all thousand farmers that are on the island could be here today. I know that the 2,000 home gardeners couldn't be here and thousands of consumers that support our localized food economy. But I feel comfortable saying that all of them would be opposed to a mass burn incinerator. Um, the economics don't work for it and encourage the county to really, uh, and the mayor to consider and start asking those really hard questions of how could we more prudently invest uh, you know, such a large amount of money into creating, say, solar or uh, other energy generation opportunities. Uh, we are really looking forward to a time when each district has composting uh, happening at a larger scale, um, and that you know there's there's much wiser ways that we can do this upcycling, recycling. I think you guys have heard uh, all of that information today. Um, I guess in general, I, I do have concerns too about a uh, lack of transparency um, with you know uh, what's happening at the state level governance and preemption. And I just want to encourage the council to really call on your constituency to start playing a more active role and, and getting your constituency educated about what's happening with these different issues because the constituency will back you up. And you know we don't want the council to be bullied. Um, and, and there is great concern about uh, large corporate interests coming in um, from the state level and trying to override counties' abilities to determine the future and health of our children and land. You know, as a farmer and a father of three children, um, I'm fully in favor of uh, Resolution 452. Uh, so please support this resolution and, and make a decision, you know, that's going to improve the health and environment of our island community and our children. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to. also good. Great. So did you just in for the record? Um, the previous testifier? Dashiell Kerr. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Daniel McCarley. I'm uh, here in support of 452. I am a local farmer, uh, new to North Kohala, but I'm a 13-year Army veteran and I did uh, four deployments to Iraq. Where I had to live at Blot Air Base for one of those 15 month tours where I was located next to a burn pit, okay, just like most of the bases over there. Now they're starting to find out that, you know, there's lots of respiratory illnesses that we're coming down with. So I have that to look forward to, you know. You already heard about uh, Spokane, you know, so I have all these health issues to look forward to. So I don't know if you want that going down on the big island here, but. You know, it's, it's not fun, it doesn't smell good, you know, it, 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 it's just, it's horrible, okay? Um, I don't know, there's some questions you should be asking each other or yourself, I don't know if you even talked about this, it doesn't seem like it, this is coming up, but uh, would you want to live near this incinerator? Do you want to smell this constantly? 
Would you want your kids breathing this toxic air? Do you want to breathe, breathe this toxic air? Would you be okay with burning trash in your backyard? Because if you, if you are, then let's go ahead and do this. But if not, I, I, don't, I don't see why you would you want a huge burn pit going on. Huge incinerator. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, I, when did this become okay? And why is this okay? For an incinerator. I don't know if you guys think about these things, but who is supporting this? Because I don't think anybody supports this. You know, where did it come from? Is it just the mayor's idea? But we should be picking up. I, I don't think we should be poisoning our land and our air and our people. Um, just remember that you work for us and it's not the other way around. So please don't kill us by sending stuff into the air. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Is that for me? Two more testifiers, please. Okay. Our next testifier is Lani. Please wait. Aloha, Madam Chair and County Council. My name is Lani Weigert, and I'm the Executive Director of the Hawaii Agritourism Association a statewide 501c3 nonprofit, as well as the marketing director for Hamako Mushrooms out in La Boy Boy. I am in support of Bill 25, which has been moving through both the Planning Commission as well as through the County Council for the last two years. So uh, what people are just now hearing about it, they're just coming into the, into the fold. However, I want everybody to know that this has been going on for years and so uh, we've been putting a lot of work on it and I'd also like to offer my help uh, Madam Chair if there's ever a discussion outside the chambers with regards to bringing everyone together to try to get some structure to make everybody happy about this. This bill is about economic development. Rising costs in, in farming uh, it's really difficult. Many farmers would like to supplement their income with ag tourism uh, year-round. And that was another thing because farmers couldn't keep their crops going year-round many times. The value-added products made with their produce that is imperfect, their seconds, their thirds, would normally either wasted or thrown away, but now put into jellies, jams, teas, chips, etc., they're able to still make money uh, again year-round. They could also move their shelf life from one week of fresh produce into a value-added product that now has a shelf life of one year. Value-added products can be sold 24-7 um, over our website as well. Revenue from tours and value-added products help the farmer afford to make improvements as well as hire additional labor. At Kamakul Mushrooms, where I work, there are 17 employees. 14 live right in the rural community, which is uh, already noted as one of the highest in unemployment, not only on the island, but within the state. And this type of farm operation is able to afford to bring them all in. This bill is about agriculture education. Our youth need to learn and be inspired about agriculture if we hope to cultivate a succession of farmers. People want to meet their farmer, learn about their crop and how to prepare it. People want to live a healthier lifestyle and eat locally grown food. Farm visits teach people about the history and the heritage of the location, and it is a wholesome activity for the entire family to enjoy. Setting a daily visitor cap of 15 people would hardly uh, be feasible. What happens if we get 20 people in that day? Do we turn them away? What kind of a low spirit would that be? Please vote yes for Bill 25. I'll Our next speaker is Christine Kuba. Aloha, County Council members. My name is Christine Kubat. Here is the no guinea pigs required solution to our waste, our landfill problem. Step one, a buyback center. People in the community bring paper, glass, plastic, metal, clean, all treated well as resources to the buyback center. They get a little bit of money for it. Step two, a real MRF. We already have the facility. Um, it brings in municipal solid waste, 
but there's no energy requirements. And Christine, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we're having a, a hard time hearing you. I'm not sure if the microphone's too close, or if you could just speak a little bit slower, maybe. Okay, yeah, you, you, we'll have you start over. Start over. Okay, how's this? It, it's, it's better. Okay. Better. Here is the no guinea pigs required solution to our landfill problem. Step one, a buyback center. People in the community bring paper, glass, plastic, metal, all clean to the buyback center. They get a little bit of money for it because they treated it well. Experience, three years plus, but only at about the 10,000 ton per year level. Step two, a real materials recovery facility. We already have the sort station in place. This can be done very easily. Municipal solid waste comes in. Glass, paper, plastic, metal gets sorted. But there's no energy requirement. Three plus years experience. Lots of people have it. About 50,000 tons per year. Step three, a composting facility. Food and food contaminated paper go into this facility. And we give out free compost. Why not? We're giving out free mulch. Let's give free compost. We can afford it. Experience, three plus years, absolutely. But at about the 35,000 tons per year level. Step four, which is highly debatable, I will admit there are people in uh, Recycle Hawaii and other people I admire who will argue with me on this, but I think it would be a good idea to have a small scale waste to energy. SHRM uh, on the Environmental Management Commission has been claiming that there's new technology that can get down to this level. So, okay, step four, the residuals from step one to three, which is not gonna be very much, it'll be about 20,000 tons per year, can go in. Electricity can get generated, but it can be used on site by local entre entrepreneurs, businesses, who now have access to Paper, glass, metal, plastic. Step five, a materials recovery host park. Vendors who want to make use of these materials have electricity, they have space, they get space, power, resources. This equals local jobs and sustainability. How do I know this is the solution? Because I spent a lot of my time next to trash cans and diverting trash myself. Take a look at this right here. Everything in this container is all that has to go to the landfill after zero waste Earth Day at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. We had 2,000 plus people. We set up two sort stations. I stood next to trash cans. I didn't let people throw stuff in the trash. We collected everything we could. And this right here is all that we actually would have to take to the landfill. We had a 99.965% diversion rate, zero waste, baby, this is it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike, do you have two testifiers? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the first one will be Mr. David Snover, is that correct? <coughs> Mr. David Snover representing himself, and you would like to comment on bill number 25. Whenever you're right, say that. Thank you, council members, for your hard efforts and your time today. I support stimulating farmers' efforts, both large and small, on a big island. This bill seems to me not the answer as it's written. If consideration for plan approval is being made for an ag tourism application that is located on top of or access through an existing residential community or neighborhood, which is heavily impacted by from 5,000 to 30,000 additional visitors annually, said community should be given ample notice of the application and give it a chance to more confirm. Um, I object to inclusion of barn dance and concerts. I object to inclusion of offices and model homes. I object to the development of trailer parks. 
if actual farm income becomes secondary and the tourist industry becomes the primary source of income, especially if it's non-food related vehicles, then we lose the intent of the bill, which is to promote island food self-sustainability and support local farming. Uh, I keep it short, I agree overall with the statements of Janice Green from Kona and the Sierra Club in regard to this bill. There are a lot of non-ag related things in this bill that should not be there, I believe, Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, our next testifier will be Mr. Jeffrey Rauch, um, representing the Beach Road Farm um, in support of Resolution 452-14. Good morning, council members. My name is Jeff Rauch, and I represent Beach Road Farm. I'm speaking today for myself and my partner, Lynn Howell. Most modern citizens, including mayors, do not understand the intrinsic value of carbon. Although carbon is almost everywhere, including our bodies, its abundance and consistent presence in our environment is overlooked as a source of life. In the case of farming, it is carbon in the form of humus that enables a soil to be fertile, workable, and water holding. Most humus in the United States has been continuously mined by agriculture since European subcontinents. In Hawaii, pineapple and sugarcane did their part. So now our soils have a carbon on humus deficit. This directly affects food quality and keeps our soils impoverished compared to their potential. As farmers, we are responsible for, for, for providing carbon so that humus can be made by soil on the farm. Other than cover crops, on the Big Island, the only available bulk carbon is at the Kona and Hilo green waste yards. In Hilo, the newly shredded green waste disappears as fast as it is produced. This results in a shortage for the many small farms and gardens who depend on this material and who are arguably the local lifeline of our imported food supply interrupted. Anyone who grows food consciously knows the value of green waste and compost. Many of us have long asked that the island's food waste and green waste be combined to make compost that would be available to growers. Now the potential for using both the generator makes us wonder if all the talk about food self-sufficiency is just that, talk. We don't pretend that zero waste will be easy in a consumer culture but we do know that it values, it values all the time, and that alone makes it the best waste of disposal choice for the future. Mahalo and aloha. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Karen Kona, could I ask Shanti Brown and Annika Glass to please come forward? You can go ahead, Shanti. Hello. Hi. Nice to see that you guys all came to Kona Sain or Milo or wherever. Um, I support uh, resolution 452-14. Uh, I work at a resort. There are five kitchens at that resort. Shanti, oh, I'm sorry. Just take your name first. Oh, Shanti Bound, sorry. Um, those five kitchens throw away a massive amount of kitchen cuttings every day. What looks like rubbish to some is valuable to others. I have about an inch of dirt in my yard and I'm constantly looking for more items to compost to build up my soil. Dirt is expensive. And we ship in soil when the county could make money producing dirt by using kitchen waste. We should use the money for the incinerator plans to implement, implement innovative plans to put new life into waste by creating dirt that can be sold or used to heal chemically depleted soil. We have curbside 
We could have curbside recycling pickup in high density areas to divert tons of trash from the landfill. Do you want to be contracted into producing waste? We will be if we build an incinerator. Let's put to action campaign lingo like green and sustainable. It's time to put the heat on Helco to update the grid for solar. And how's about that fog out there today? Do you really want to bring in more uh, dirty air from Keokaha to Kona and all over the island? Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Willie. Go ahead. I'm Anita Glass. I'm from Waikoloa. I wanted to come down uh, to Kona today because um, usually I'm sitting up there in Waikoloa. I wonder if anyone has ever heard a word I said because the reception from the other sites today has been appalling and it's very difficult to understand others' testimony other than to get the gist of it. I am speaking in support of uh, Resolution 45214. Uh, the mayor's current proposal is designed to solve some part of our overall waste management problem with a 19th century solution. Recyclables and all these other wonderful ideas we have will go poof, up in smoke. Worse, we give the illusion to the general public that we have solved our problems and can forget about them for a few decades. We need to relook at formally determining our waste management needs and resurrecting the solid waste management plan, then methodically go about addressing our needs, all of them, perhaps not simultaneously, but understanding where different pieces fit. I've, <laughs> my first time to testify at a council meeting was 10 years ago, and it was on this same subject of trash. Uh, since then, I've attended other meetings because we've had many well-meaning false starts to sol solve our clear and present problem in those 10 years. There were a couple of doozies in there, but each one, we are told, is to address the crisis, that we must do this now or have missed our opportunity. I don't believe that. If we do this, the incinerator, now, I would like this council in its deliberations to address the numbers and how they don't add up. We don't have that much trash to keep up our end of the contract. Uh, I think it falls short of malfeasance to have you uh, ignore the numbers. Seconds remaining. Do I have seconds or is that it? 30 seconds remaining. Yeah, so that's perfect. Um, not working with the numbers may fall short of malfeasance, but it definitely is an indication of a failure to exercise fiduciary responsibility of a public office. Leaving out all the details, I just am asking you to step back and look at all the opportunities that were identified today, and I thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to go back to Kohala. Sean? Aloha, Madam Chair. Next up, we have Mr. Christopher Dean speaking in support of uh, Reso 45214. Hello, thank you for your service. And I would like to, um, for the county to think about um, the money aspect of this situation. There's a few people who are eager for this money. And I just want you to know that this is our money that you're going to be spending. And you can see that virtually everyone is against this incinerator project. Mixing clean uh, organic material that can be beneficial to the environment with hazardous and toxic substances and then causing pollution uh, and turning it into 
turning something that could be beneficial into something poisonous, I think you better reconsider that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, just uh, state your name and what you testified on. Hello, Council. My name is Doug Navarro. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Finance, and I'm a local farmer here in Kohala. Uh, I'm asking for more research proving a mass burn incinerator is the best economical option. The long-term cost on environment needs to be better analyzed. Moving the current 33% national recycling rate to 75% would create 1.5 million new jobs nationally. Therefore, a new plan focused on more recycling and local composting facilities will create a stronger local economy through creating more jobs and encouraging an increase in local food production. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman, there's, there's about 24 more people wishing to testify. Would you, and I know it's, it's noon, would you like to go through all the testifiers or take a lunch break? Okay. Then um, is there anybody, yeah, is, is there anybody in any of the sites that just cannot, um, I guess we could take a quick lunch, like a... Madam Chair, yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. Is it possible for us to maybe do an hour lunch? I mean, something that's reasonable for everybody to do, but maybe not the yeah, hour. So if we, if we reconvene at 1 o'clock, um, could anybody that just really wants to testify and would not be able to return let... Um, yeah, that's everybody. <laughs> um, Madam Chair, I, I think, is the staff making lunch for us in the back? They are. I would even do an eating lunch, I mean, a working lunch possibility. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Okay, so we need to take an hour lunch. Um, yeah, I'm just going to ask everybody to um, please come back at 1 o'clock. Go, go have lunch and come back at 1 o'clock, and we'll be resuming our meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, I know Mr. Onishi knows we were going to begin at 1, and I'm sure the council members from this side will be here shortly, but is it all right if I, with you, if I go ahead? Okay. Let's see. I think I left off in um, Ohala, but let me check Pahoa. Mike, do you still have testifiers? Uh, well, yes, ma'am. We yeah. still have four testifiers here. Okay. You can uh, bring your first two forward and go ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Um, the first one sitting down will be Roxanne R.J. Hampton, representing herself, speaking in opposition to Bill 25. Okay. Good afternoon, council people, and a whole long time since I've seen you all. Uh, I'm R.J. Hampton, also known as Roxanne R. Hampton. I'm here today to tell you all, just to tell you all, the wood buffer zones make agricultural tourism operators good neighbors. I think I got that out really good. I hope you heard that. And um, I believe that the amendments have been made uh, for this bill. Now, we as people that live in Seaview and I live in, we personally bought this. I know that it was proposed, it was called in the uh, chair. But I looked at this bill and I said, I want to thank all of the council people that we were able to notify their aides came to our aid. And I want to change that. But some of what we have are amendments that we see in this bill. Uh, I'm also concerned Excuse about. Excuse me, Archie. I'm, uh, we're having a little bit of trouble hearing because the um, words are breaking up. And I think maybe if you could just make sure the microphone is right in front of you and kind of speak to it, it might help. I'm not sure if it's a reception problem, though. <coughs> but we'll, we'll take back your time a little bit. Thanks. What my point today, and I'll make it real simple, because I want to do with Janice. And I just want to say is that I want you all to look at this bill very carefully and the language that is in the bill. Because what I realize now is the legislation is supposed to be about holding it up, seeing that it holds water and that it can be uh, used in the future, that it won't be broke down, and that the intentions of the bill will stand up 
to legal, um, how you say, scrutiny. I'm really concerned about the buffer zones, and I can't say it enough. I'd also like to see recreation um, deleted and recreational involvement with agriculture in the first section of the definitions put in. I do want everybody to enjoy agricultural products and things. I'm really concerned about the abuse that may come from all of this um, dead language. I don't know if you're talking about workers in one part where they talk about uh, people coming in and having hands-on experiences. There's just too much. So this is what I'm going to say to my council person is, is that please know that you just can't go shopping and make a Christmas list and come up with a piece of legislation. And all I want to say to you is stop surfing the web and trying to cut and paste something together that we have to live with. Actually work and interact with your community and stop playing client identified politics and I will be happy to support your bills, especially if they work for the little guy. I got three seconds left. My name is Roxanne R. J. Hampton and I am running for County Council, Fifth District. Thank you very much. Oh, and uh, Margaret Willie's bill uh, uh, resolution, I totally want it to be Thank you. Okay. Our next testifier will be Ms. Sativa Sultan, representing herself, um, speaking in opposition to Bill 25 and commenting on 414. Yes, in support. Okay. okay um, aloha, good afternoon. My name is Sativa, and I thank you for this opportunity to speak. Uh, I just wanted to, I'm sure everybody's aware, but we, we have a law already. We have a on the books already a law for agricultural tourism. What this bill is about is introducing minor agricultural tourism. What that means is you have a neighbor, he has an orchard, maybe he plants a few pineapples. What does he get? Well, according to this bill, he'll get 100 customers that come to his house every week. He can get up to 400 to 500 customers per month, and he can get 5,800 customers or clients to his house a year, and that's if anyone's counting. It could be 6,000, 7,000, you don't know. So, because there's no oversight. So why are they all coming to your neighbor's house now? Well, because he's gotten a, um, oh, did you have a bill? Because, I'm sorry, because he's gotten an agricultural permit, and now he can sell things like, but not limited to, he can sell things like, um, all agricultural and horticultural products, animal feed, baked goods, ice cream, ice cream based desserts, beverages, jams, gifts, food stuff, clothing, mugs, t-shirts. He can also sell novelty t-shirts and other clothing, crafts and knickknacks imported from other states and countries. I hear people talking about this is a good bill because local products can be sold. Right in here it says he can sell it from other states and countries. Okay? Now, you can also get barn dances. All you have to do is plant some pineapples. You get this minor ag tourism. You got, you got some land, maybe an acre. Uh, now you can do barn dances, but it, it talks about you need music for barn dances, but it doesn't say uh, whether it's going to be amplified or whether it's going to be acoustic, how many barn dances you can get. Um, also, your neighbor now, because he planted those pineapples and has the, uh, the minor tour thing, he can have tour buses come up your street if it's a county or state road. Now let's look at this bill, what was taken out of the law that we used to have. All the site inspections were taken out. There's no more site inspections. So you can basically say on that permit that you grow anything, they won't come to your house and check. They took out all the plan approvals, so you no longer have to even submit a plan. The biggest thing they took out was the heart of this bill. And the heart of this bill, which is on the books, is that the farmers have to prove that 50% of their gross revenues, thank you, 50% of their gross revenues comes from their farm. They took that out. So that means, what that means is now somebody can say, I make $2 on my farm that I grow things, but I make $75,000 on my store where I can bring things in from states and countries. Um, I can bring gift items in. That's like a television, you know. So what we're saying is look at what they took out of the law, which really helps the farmers, because now the businessman can pretend to be a farmer and put the farmers out of business. And that's what this bill is about. For the businessman, it cuts the farmer out of the loop. Am I pal? Uh, that was for your first bill, if you'd like to move on. To okay, thank you. Thank you for, for letting me bend your ear on that. Um, and the second one, 
And they also took other things that I'd love to have time, but I don't have time. The second one, of course, I am in support of 452. I am very much in support. I don't like the idea of burning, how closed is closed when they're talking about the system. There's a lot of questions people still have. Well, my concern is what's the hurry? And also, I have an idea that many people have had before um, that would get people to recycle. It would get people to recycle big time, and that is pay as you throw. If you're charging people for what they're throwing in the landfill, if you say to a person, you can recycle your entire trash bag, or you can pay to throw it in our landfill, what do you think they're going to do? It's a no-brainer. They're going to recycle. Some people are going to toss their trash. They do that anyway. So all we're saying is there are many ideas like pay as you throw that can force recycling when you're really hitting people's pocketbook, and we can try at least to do alternatives to that. But before we go burning and we get into this whole 30-year contract, that's what we did with Ormat, the geothermal company. We signed a long contract with them, and then we lost all rights. So really, we don't want to sign a 30-year contract with these people. We need a if we, anything, we need a small contract. And I understand it costs a lot of money to put this in. So, so let's not. We're not in a hurry. Let's think of other ways that we haven't tried yet to solve the problem. Thank you very much. Aloha, everybody. You know. Thank you. Stephanie, do you still have testifiers in Hilo? Yes, I do. Shall about I how many? Um, about eight. Okay, go ahead. Okay, our first testifier is Justin Avery. Uh, <coughs> County Council. My name is Justin Avery. I'm a homeowner and a graduate of UH Hilo. And, um, Today we're talking about the uh, biggest capital improvement project uh, the county government has ever discussed undertaken. Unfortunately, we don't need this project. For many controversial issues, there are lots of different sides and, and shades to the issues. But this particular issue, on the other hand, is just about as black and white as it gets. Please consider these facts. Studies show reusing and recycling creates 10 times more jobs than an incinerator would. Why do we want to pay for throwing away jobs? Reusing and recycling saves four times more energy than the energy that would be created by an incinerator. Huna Geothermal can generate twice as much energy as it currently does. It doesn't it doesn't uh, produce that much energy, as much energy as it could, because Halco won't buy it. Why generate more energy with this incinerator when there's already an abundance of, of geothermal energy that's not currently being purchased? Why do you think Halco is going to purchase this energy from the incinerator? Property values decline in the neighborhood of an incinerator. Is it fair to put this in the middle of the second largest Hawaiian neighborhood, Keokaha, in the, in the country? They already have an airport. Do they really deserve to have a, a big trash burner? Um, the ecotourism bill is, is great. Thank you for that. This is a step in the right direction. Uh, but, but can you imagine when these ecotourists come here and, and they see this big eyesore of a trash burner in the middle of beautiful Hilo, what they're going to think? be like, wait a minute, this is like a mixed message. It's like I'm coming here to you know, do the whole eco-tourist thing, and here they are burning their rubbish when they don't really need to. Um, poor Jack Johnson is going to have to write a, another special song just, just for Hawaii County. He's going to have to change the one, the catchy, reduce, reuse, recycle one that everybody knows to uh, burn and send toxic ash to Kona. That doesn't, it's not as catchy, so I feel sorry for Jack Johnson for, for, that, for that reason. We'll be incentivized to generate more waste, to haul in more waste. And, and where is that waste going to come from? Are we going to start bringing waste from Kona? Is that the plan? Are we going to start bringing waste from Maui? Maui's kind of in limbo with their whole uh, waste plan over there. Are we going to barge it in from Maui? Are we just going to be like a trash mecca for, for, for the islands? The KL Reuse Center is, is a success functioning in the black. It's making money, the KL Reuse Center. They divert rubbish from the landfill. They provide 
great jobs to the locals and make money and make many residents happy with all the good deals you can get there. I mean, have, have you been there? They're great deals all the time. And there are lots of jobs that are being created. And they're making money. Okay, this is a success story that's happening right here before our eyes. And if we had an incinerator, we would be paying money, an exorbitant amount of money, to discourage that. There wouldn't be those jobs. There wouldn't be that... Uh, uh, diverting of these valuable resources and and residents wouldn't have access to all these great finds. Hauling rubbish to Kona, as controversial it is, is by far the cheapest way to handle the rubbish. Huanahulu has another 30 years in their lined landfill. Hilo landfill is not lined. Uh, Huanahulu is lined. Is that my time? Yes. Okay, let me conclude. Uh, please, Honorable County Council, leave a leg leg legacy of conscientious waste management. Future generations will thank you. Thank you. Our next testifier is Sharon Dawn. Aloha, County Council. My name is Sharon Dawn, and I have two resolutions I am in support of. The first one I'd like to speak about is Resolution 454-14. I wholeheartedly support the uh, adoption of the design guidelines of the Pahoa Village Design Guidelines uh, um, that was dated October 2013 to guide the, the agricultural design and siting of structures within the Pahoa Village Design District. I especially want to give kudos to uh, these uh, individuals in the community that pulled together and uh, they included the youth of the community. And I want to segue you with that into my support of Resolution 452-14. Uh, I wholeheartedly support this resolution. I believe that um, I, as an educator in uh, STEM programs, that's uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, um, I have been preaching to my students how we can reuse our, our um, uh, discards from other people for entrepreneurial endeavors. So I first want to say that I'm concerned that in using an incinerator, we are enabling wasters and disabling entre the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, one citizen's trash is another's treasure. Waste equals RITS. That's R-I-T-T-Z. Resources in transition to zero. We are in perfect position to become a model island to the globe. By incinerating uh, our so-called waste, we are incinerating, incinerating the hope, opportunity, or creativity and entrepreneurial endeavors of many of our low-income keiki engaged in STEM programs to date. Um, we could, in fact, uh, use alternative methods. We could create opportunities for STEM think tanks with that money that would be spent on the incinerators. We could uh, create entrepreneurial uh, ships with that mulch machines for subdivisions, alternative transportation, studies and use of those treasures to create new products, uh, working playgrounds which would be designed to mulch and uh, aerate composting materials uh, while kids are playing on them. Let the kids design it. Uh, mulching invasive species for use in composting and or raw material for new products or building materials. Invasive plants uh, for, for the same use. Create a method for tourists to export our plastic, create products from plastic that uh, become keepsakes for them to use here and take home, such as specially designed Big Island rain ponchos for rec from recycled plastics. Create opportunities, change lives. Thank you. Thank you. Here in Kona, I'd like to ask Barbara DeFranco and you see there's a couple of people who didn't return from lunch, so I'm going to try. Um, yes, Eve Sakal is not here either. Um, and Donna Ober had to leave. The, the green should light up. So Barbara, you can go ahead. It's not, it's not on. Aloha, Madam Chair, County Council. My name is Barbara DeFranco, and um, I'm here to oppose the way that this Agritourism Bill uh, 25 is 
uh, constructed. You know, for years we've worked on something like this. Uh, maybe five years we've been working on something like this. But uh, especially concerning the minor uh, farmers, I live on a farm, and um, so I do understand uh, added choice and create being creative. And in my own creativity, we do have in place something called a special permit which you apply for if you want to have events, weddings, uh, if you want to sell at a choice products on your farm. We already have something in place. And with that, we have oversight. What I see in this bill is pro a problem for our neighborhoods, that you're going to allow commercial use of ag land for someone to open retail with, in, a, in a very, very open way. You're, you have no, um, since we're sort of complaint driven, to go out to respond, you put the onus on the neighbors. There is uh, to complain about somebody having over 100 people a week. No one's going to be there counting. You, you, you absolutely cannot control this. You know, we have a sign ordinance that we don't enforce. Now you're going to have all these people out there in neighborhoods putting signs up. You know, there's all these things that you that you need to consider. You have ADA compliance. You're, you're allowing farmers to use commercial use with no wastewater management even being addressed. Uh, what happens to those things? When you do get a special use permit, you have to go through every single part of the county. All Everything has to be looked at. Everything has to be approved. In the major part of this one, it looks like a lot of that is done. There's a lot of oversight of people looking and I agree that we need things to do as farmers of being creative with marketing our things. We have things like farmers markets that farmers endeavoring to do other things. And we have the internet, which is an amazing way for farmers to get their word out. To bring this and to allow uh, events, uh, to barn dancing and all these things to go on in our neighborhoods. As a farmer, I get up very early in the morning, maybe five. And then I work on the farm, then I go to work. <laughs> and then I come home, no, five, seven, seven o'clock at night, I'm pow. I don't want to be dealing with my neighbor now having a barn dance because they grow seven pineapples. Or, anyway, I have to agree that we need to relook at this, we need to rewrite this, and we need to really address the missing links. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Shannon, I um, don't see anybody else here in corner, so I'm going to ask you to come forward. Aloha, Council. <clears throat> Let's see, I wanted to testify on the egg bill. I'm not in support of it at this time. I am, however, in support of ag tourism. I just don't think this is the right bill, even though the newer amendments look good to me. I've been a little out of the loop with it. I was involved early on, paying attention to it, but it drug out so long that I kind of got out of the loop. So anyway, um, I'm not supporting um, Bill 25. And on the, the incinerator, I think we need to back up on this a little bit. Um, a one-minute Google search pulls up nine bankruptcies to municipalities related to waste to energy incinerators. Will, will, will we be number 10, 11, 12 to go bankrupt over this? I sure hope not. I read that waste to energy is the dirtiest technology, hands down, spewing potent dioxin and mercury carcin carcinogens, uh, and the newer facilities are even more polluting and less efficient than the older models from what I've read. Uh, waste to energy is said to be the most inefficient and expensive way to generate electricity and not economically viable. It's plagued with malfunctions, shutdowns, gas leaks, explosions and seriously compromising air quality besides helping, uh, uh, besides being associated with heart attacks, cancers, and other neurological disorders. Other towns have already experienced steep rate, uh, rate hikes and tax increases. San Francisco is now diverting 72% of its waste and is on target to increase their goal of zero waste 
Uh, recycling saves money and creates more jobs. I think your names will be remembered if you strap us with this white elephant for 20 or 30 years of payments. And I sure hope you'll rethink this direction before you make this expensive blunder. Please support resolution 452. Mahalo. Just point of order, Karen. Um, so if Council Member Onishi returned. I can check here. Mr. Onishi, are you back in here now? He hasn't been here all day. Okay. Uh, uh, no, he's not in the chambers, but he is in the building. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other testifiers here in Kona that I haven't? Oh. Okay, well, just to um, let you know, about uh, uh, two people were going to testify, two or three, but that happened. But every time. So now let me check with Kohala. Sean, do you still have some Hello, Madam Chair. Uh, we had nine uh, testifiers before the break, but they have since uh, left and have not returned. Okay, so you don't have any other testifiers? No testifiers, no.